Now, when I was watching AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night, I was truly beholden to something spectacular, something remarkable, splendiferous, you name it. This single line segment. Oh, MJF, Chris Jericho, their little Broadway number, their Vegas number, their whatever the hell you want to call it number. It was fantastic. I tweeted as it happened that this is professional wrestling. And once I saw that segment, I automatically knew what was going to happen. You're going to have some fans that were like me that absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. And you were going to have many others that were going to rampage about it and rage about it because when it comes to professional wrestling, when it comes to social media, one thing or another, all of us have got to bitch about something. But that was what you saw on Wednesday night was professional wrestling. And Friday night, same thing, SmackDown. This whole court case with Otis and The Miz over the Money in the Bank contract. And you got fans complaining about that, about how hokey that was and how stupid that was. And it's professional wrestling. Uh, where did everybody go so wrong? Where did everybody so easily lose their damn way? Is it the Meltzer impact of you focus on all the go out there and make it look fake as hell, thousand move mark fuck fests that you're into, and that's the only thing you consider professional wrestling? Like, what the hell is it with, with the current fan base for professional wrestling as a whole? They got so many people that find so many problems with MJF and Chris Jericho doing a sing-along segment on Wednesday night. You do understand the name of the game is about characters and storylines, not the moves and the matches, right, you morons? Because wrestling more and more over the past decade and a half has continued to perpetuate a cycle where it's went down more of the Meltzer path, where it's all about the moves and the matches, and oh, 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 guess what? The biggest company in the world, WWE, is significantly smaller in terms of its overall viewership. Your number two U.S. company, at least, is AEW Dynamite, and they also continue to emphasize the matches more and more. And all the while, guess what? They can't consistently even get up to a million damn viewers. And let's not even get to the joke and fart that is NXT. And need I continue? And before any of you clown shows bring up something like New Japan, who gives a crap? That's Japan. Let them have it. That crap don't fly here on a large basis in the U.S. Period. Like what you saw on Wednesday night. Jericho, MJF. That's professional wrestling. The Otis Miz segment. Also, while hokey, corny, yes. Also, that is professional wrestling. Like, what in the hell happened to people? When did everybody become so damn regimented and rigid about this crap? Like, I can only imagine so many of the fans, whatever's actually left, to watch professional wrestling anymore. Imagine what the hell they would have done back in the Hogan era. They'd have been sitting there saying, you know, that macho man, he's just too off the wall for me. He's too yoked up. He's too coked up. And the warrior is snarling. And, and yeah, he, he just, he's too roided up. I don't get him. They shouldn't be pushing somebody like Hogan or Andre. Those are big guys that can't move. By God, you know who they need to push? They need to push Terry Taylor to the moon. Bret Hart in 89. Yeah. Like, that's the type of stupidity that we're dealing with here. The same type of clowns in the Attitude Era who would have been pissing and moaning because they wanted Dean Malenko pushed straight to the top. Like, so many of these fans that sit there and pretend like they lived during the Attitude Era, during the Monday Night Wars, and pretended like they watched it, but yet they're the same clowns that are crapping on this stuff. 
Do you remember Choppy Pee Pee? May Young gave birth to a damn hand. It was glorious and spectacular. You damn right. But more than that, it's all ridiculous. The Undertaker, Kane, so many things about their gimmicks are absolutely, totally ridiculous. I could go on and on and on and on. And the point being is if it makes money and makes big money, then by God, it's fine. And it's professional wrestling. Let's not take it so damn seriously all the time. It does not need to be a monotonous robotic match fest all throughout every show. If you do that, then you'd just be sitting there eventually in six months of your circle jerking to it as only 100,000 of you are left to watch the damn show. Wrestling, at its best, is a variety show. It has something for everyone. Maybe one or two folks that everybody can really enjoy. But then you have some folks that like this type of performance, this type of performance, and this type of performance. Either way, variety, spice, something different. Now, if you didn't like the MJF Jericho segment on Wednesday because it just, you didn't think it was a good segment, okay. I disagree with you, but that's okay. Like, not every attempt to bring some light to the show, not every attempt to have fun is going to land. That's the nature of the beast. Not every joke's going to connect. That's for damn sure. But if you're going to sit there and say, well, that's just stupid. There's no place for this. And Tony Khan, you know, the kind of Jim Cornette crap type of logic here at this point in time. Not everything needs to be the same. Not everything needs to be so goddamn ridiculously serious. And when you think about somebody like a Cornette, you know, that's why he was always on the losing end of everything because he took shit way too damn seriously. You know, lightened up a little bit and had a little bit more fun in the areas and territories he would have been involved in, would have done things a little bit differently. They might still be around to this day. Not everything needs to be wrestler A versus wrestler B. And that, 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 that. Who wants to really watch that? Even the absolute hardest of hardcore match nerds eventually would get tired of that. Unless you're freaking Meltzer Magoo. You're the only one that wouldn't. But you got all these guys that sit there and talk about Japan. Like Japan and their wrestling games are some of the most idiotic, ridiculous, crappy things that I've ever seen. You'll sit there and geek out to Kenny Omega wrestling blow-up dolls and nine-year-old girls. But MJF and Chris Jericho want to get in a freaking kick line, and they want to sing and express themselves. You got a problem with that? Yeah. Not the wrestling of a nine-year-old girl. Not the wrestling of blow-up dolls. You all be the same one that were trying to tell me a few years back that Joey Ryan's dick gimmick was pretty cool. Well, guess what? Guess it's not so cool anymore when you find out he's kind of touchy McRapey, ha! Huh? No, that is an example of it's just stupid. There is a line you could cross. That was a line that you cross. Something like what MJF and Jericho did is not crossing a damn line. It is ultimately, at the end of the day, supposed to be entertainment. Even if it is sports entertainment or professional wrestling or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It is still supposed to be entertainment. And you need to mix it up. You need to do different crap in order to entertain people. And newsflash, if you're trying to draw in new viewers, the way to do that is not through the moves and the matches, you morons. It's the characters, it's the stories, it's the segments, it's the skits, it's the moments. Those are the things that matter. Those are the things that always have mattered. Those are the things that always will matter. Still one of the highest rated Raw segments of all time. And you think I'm going to talk about This Is Your Life Rock? I'm not even going to talk about that. It was Briscoe and Patterson, the Stooges. The Stooges. One of the most watched Raw segments of all time, of all time, of all time. And if you don't believe me, ask Jerry Briscoe, because he will always tell you about it to the very end. Seriously. Like the thing with Otis in court on Friday night. Like, at least be happy they're trying to do something with the money in the bank contract. At least be happy that they're trying to do something to build characters. They're trying to do some type of storytelling. As much as we haven't gotten that in the past decade in professional wrestling, even some of the lesser attempts to do so, or at least the ultimately attempts to tell a story. 
You have to have guys be bashing each other's brains in every week. That gets old. Just prodding guys out there for random matches all the time when nobody knows anything about them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody knows why the hell these two are wrestling, and therefore they don't care about why they're wrestling. And ultimately, again, as a clear reminder, they don't give a crap about either one of the two guys or gals that are wrestling. You need this type of stuff. It's palate cleansing. It's something different. It is part of the sensationalism that is professional wrestling. Why so serious? Why so serious? And if you're going to come back and tell me, well, it's crap like that is why wrestling isn't what it once was. No, it's because it went away from crap like that, you out-of-touch morons, that wrestling is in the damn shape and thing. It's the This Is Your Life segment. And the rock and sock connection in the back and forth between The Rock and Mick Foley that truly made The Rock a big time household name. It's all the segments over the years and all these other things. Like, those are the things that make stars. Those are the things that draw viewers. Those are the things that make the most money. The matches are just a piece of that story. They might be the culmination, but they are not the most important thing. They're just not. They're like the potatoes, a nice side dish to have. You want to have it if you're going to have a full steak dinner. But it's not the steak. It isn't. And we need to get back to more of the zaniness and goofiness and craziness of professional wrestling. Because that's the best chance we have for professional wrestling to be truly mainstream again. We've tried it the Meltzer move match mark way the past decade plus, and all you a-holes that have aligned with this strategy, guess what? Ding dong, dumb dicks, it's the wrong freaking strategy. What else would I expect from a generation of wrestling fans that actually believes that Cena was an all-time great? You're not an all-time great if you drove away more than 50% of your company's viewers in a decade when you're at the top. That ain't how it works. Same type of asshats that'll sit there and say, Rick Flair was the greatest of all time. Rick Flair was the greatest of all time. Unfortunately, when you start thinking about money drawn, in no way, shape, or form, is Ric Flair the greatest of all time. And always comes back to, when you think about in-ring performers as well, nowhere was he even close to being the best in-ring performer of all time. If you watched a match of his, in 1989, it would be the same type of match that you see in 2000 damn 10. You saw it once, you saw it all. You heard one of his programs, you damn near heard it all. And when he was at the top of a company, it's Crockett, it's WCW, they are always running second fiddle, period. Look, like I said, some things are corny and you go too far. It's better to go too far at this point than not far enough. But I'm tired of the generation of wrestling fans that takes these moves and these matches to umpteenth degrees of seriousness that drives everybody else the hell away, where the characters don't matter, the stories don't matter, the moments don't matter. It's all about moves and matches. That era needs to end and needs to end now. And the fact that MJF and Jericho, two infinitely more talented people than anybody that's actually criticizing them at this particular moment, need to, they need to shut the hell up, is what they need to do. We need more of that, not less of that. We need more Otises. We don't need more damn Dean Malenkos. We don't. And you know what? I hate to even disrespect Dean Malenko. Because in, even with his boring-ass shtick, similar to a landstorm, they had infinitely more charisma and star power and storytelling ability than 98% of these asshats in professional wrestling. Oh, look at Kenny Omega. The girls are sleeping. The girls are sleeping. And guess what? When the fans see his back, they quickly go asleeping. Because he's boring as hell. And this is the type of idiot that you pumped up for years. How dare you? How dare you, madams, sirs? You don't like it, that's fine, but stop killing the fun for everybody else and stop trying to make wrestling such a serious, hardcore niche product that nobody wants to damn watch anymore.